Good evening, everyone. Breaking news tonight on the suffering in Texas and the Texas senator who decided to leave it all behind for a long weekend at the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun. First, though, the impact on millions of Texans not named Ted Cruz of record cold weather and the devastation it's brought on the power grid, gas and water systems in the state. Here's what it means for them. Gas lines, people driving 50 miles, then waiting online for a few gallons of gasoline to power home generators. And those are the lucky ones. For some, without heat, it means burning furniture. The moment when you're trapped inside and you have to destroy your baby gate because it is 10 degrees inside of your house and this is the only way you can stay warm because the power's out. Others, such as Kiana Abrams and her family, were forced to relocate when the power went out, then returned to find their homes flooded from burst pipes. She says they lost everything. It's water coming from the ceiling because somebody pipes burst upstairs. Y'all, look at the water. Look at the water. Our whole apartment. Y'all, our whole apartment. Our whole apartment. According to Texas officials, nearly 800 water systems in the state have been affected by the weather. 13 million Texans are under boil water orders. Two hospitals in Houston have no water service. They've been getting it trucked in and collecting rainwater for flushing toilets. I mean, imagine that, a major American city. Spokesperson saying their emergency rooms are backed up because patients can't meet their medical needs at homes without electricity. They're also dealing with hundreds of cases of carbon monoxide poisoning from makeshift heating arrangements, at least 300 cases in the Houston area alone, one local fire department transporting 14 victims, including seven kids in just 24 hours. Statewide, at least 15 have died of weather-related causes. As for electricity, officials say about 2 million customers have seen power restored and the rest are waiting only for lines to be reconnected. They say power plants, though, not out of danger are back online. We hope and anticipate no location will be without power tonight. The good news is we are starting the evening with every residence in the state of Texas not lacking the generation of power. So that's Texas Governor Greg Abbott. This is Texas U.S. Senator Ted Cruz returning home from Cancun, escorted through the airport in Houston by police officers. He flew there yesterday at the height of the crisis, towing a suitcase big enough for a substantial trip. Yet on his way home today at the airport in Cancun, he said it was all about his kids and he was only planning to stay a few hours. Yesterday, my daughters asked if they could take a trip with some friends. Well, he said he was just being a good dad. He also wasn't telling the truth. Back home in Houston, he tried again, and the story was different. You can decide for yourself what to make of version 2.0. We left yesterday. The plan had been to stay through the weekend with the family. Um, that, that, that was the plan. I started having second thoughts almost the moment I sat down on the plane because on the one hand, all of us who are parents have a responsibility to take care of our kids, take care of our family. That's something Texans have been doing across the state. But I also have a responsibility that I take very seriously of, of fighting for the state of Texas and, and, and frankly, leaving when so many Texans were hurting uh, didn't feel right. And so I, I changed my return flight and, and, and flew back. Uh, on the first available flight I could take. I couldn't take a morning flight because uh, the current restrictions require a COVID test. So I had to get a COVID test this morning before I could get on a flight back. So I took the first flight I could get a after getting the COVID test and, and testing negative. Hey, listen, we get it. It's hard to get out of Cancun. I mean, you know, you got to get the COVID test. It's, it's hard. Uh, just to be absolutely clear, he left... When he left for Cancun, millions of households had no power. So it's not as if this happened while he was away. And the CDC was warning, by the way, and still is on their website, that no one, no one should travel to Mexico because of COVID. Here's a level four warning on their website. But that's not all. Remember Ted Cruz initially saying, kind of laying this off on his preteen daughters. He said, my daughters asked if they could take a trip with some friends and claimed he and his wife were just dropping them off in Cancun. Well, now the New York Times obtained text messages sent from his wife, Heidi Cruz, to neighbors and friends on Wednesday. And I'm quoting now from the New York Times report. 
Their house was freezing, as Ms. Cruz put it, and she proposed a getaway until Sunday. Ms. Cruz invited others to join them at the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun, where they had stayed, quote, many times, end quote, noting the room price this week, 309 per night, and it's good security. So the whole, my daughters asked if they could take a trip with some friends, that actually wasn't true, unless the friends the daughters were referring to were Ted and Heidi Cruz, because it seems like they're the ones who planned this. Now, he's admitting they, they did plan to spend the weekend there all along as millions of his constituents were freezing in, in the dark. That alone would be bad judgment and lying uh, and, you know, using your daughters. That's not, a, that's not a good judgment either. What makes it really hypocritical, though, is that Senator Cruz just recently tweeted this about the mayor of Austin who went to Mexico at a bad moment in the pandemic. Quoting now, Hypocrites, complete and utter hypocrites. And don't forget, at Mayor Adler, who took a private jet with eight people to Cabo, and while in Cabo, recorded a video telling Austinites to stay home if you can, this is not the time to relax. In a moment, the New York Times correspondent who shares a byline on the text message story. But before we do that, we want to keep our focus on the people actually suffering in Texas tonight. You saw a bit of what Kiana Abrams and her family are going through a moment ago, the water pouring into their apartment. She joins us now. Kiana, thanks for being with us. The video is terrible. Can you just walk us through what was going through your mind when you saw what it looked like? Well, when we initially first walked in, it's, it's like complete shock. It's like one of your worst nightmares like you never ever imagined that this is going to happen to you so for me to walk in there and just see everything we have just being destroyed when it could have been prevented it was it was so heartbreaking because how am i going to explain this to my children that our whole house is gone so how are you and your family doing because I, I are you and where are you now have you you're staying in a hotel it looks like now we're in a hotel, and we've been in a hotel since months because the power has been off there. We haven't had any power, any heat, any water, anything. So now we just have to stay here until they figure out where they're going to put us. And I know I, your son, I understand, you tweeted that he's turning six on Saturday, which is two days from now. Your daughter's birthday is also coming up. Do you have any sense of when, of what, what comes next? We don't have any information. We filed our uh, renter's insurance claim. We spoke with the landlord, and it's been crickets ever since then. So we have no clue when we're going to be able to leave or where we're even going to go after this. I'm wondering, did you hear the story on, on the senator who left down to Cancun? What did you think of that? I, w I would like to go, too. <laughs> I want to be where it's warm. I want to be able to take my kids to the beach and be relaxed and know that I'm going to be eating tonight and they're going to be safe. But how I'm going to do that? And I'm stuck in Texas. Why he just doing whatever he want to do with his family? Mm. Well, Keanu Abrams, I really I wish you the best. And I hope, uh, you, you know, you get word soon on, on what comes next. Because, I mean, the not knowing with kids, it's, it's, it's a lot you're going through. We appreciate talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're now on the Ted Cruz story, specifically the details that just broke in the New York Times. Joining us is Shane Goldmacher, who shares a byline on the story. Shane, thanks for being with us. Just walk us through these text messages and what you've learned. Yeah, so what we learned is that on Wednesday, just before their trip, uh, Heidi Cruz was sending messages to a group of Houstonians, uh, basically suggesting maybe it's time to get out of town, that it was really cold. She wrote in all caps that her house was freezing. Uh, she actually had offered at one point to people that uh, she had some gas and could help, uh, you know, heat heat some people if they needed to. They'd spend time in another friend's house, uh, and they put together a trip, and uh, they went to the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun as a getaway. Uh, now, the, me the messages that she sent do not match fully with the first statement that Ted Cruz put out there, um, and, you know, he said that it was a thing driven by their children. That's not something she detailed in these messages. Doesn't mean it wasn't a part of it, but it's not something she was mentioning. Um, and my colleague Nick Vandos and I, uh, you know, wrote a story about these messages and more of the backstory that had Ted Cruz, a senator who campaigned for re-election in 2018 very strongly on his record during a past disaster in Texas, Hurricane Harvey, uh, how he left town and left the country in the middle of this one. 
I, I still don't understand. I mean, you know, his, as you said, his initial story was, you know, his daughters wanted to go with friends to, uh, you know, on a trip, and they, he and his wife were just dropping them off. I mean, if that was even true, I, I don't quite understand why you would need both the parents to drop them off, given the emergency that's going on. You would think his wife could have dropped them off if, if she felt okay leaving, um, and he would have stayed behind. So I'm just fascinated that Ted Cruz wouldn't have thought this through and expected this to be the uproar that it's become, especially given his criticism of others for leaving in other situations. You know, I, I covered Ted Cruz closely when he ran for president in 2015 and 2016. Uh, people forget he was an outstanding lawyer. He argued before the Supreme Court, and he knows carefully the meaning of language. Uh, and I think that first statement uh, left a, one impression without saying it. He didn't say he was going for one day to drop off his kids, although you could have taken that impression pretty easily from the statement. Uh, and eventually, when he came back to Houston today, he made clear that he had, in fact, intended to stay through the weekend, which is what the text messages uh, that we obtained showed. Uh, they were talking about planning on staying through Sunday. Uh, look, this is a multi-layered issue for Ted Cruz. Uh, not only are we talking about leaving his state while it's struggling and people, millions of people are without electricity, you also have to layer in that there's a pandemic happening. As you noted earlier, there are restrictions on traveling to places like Mexico. Uh, and so, you know, back in the school district that his kids are in, uh, he said that, you know, the school was closed this week. And we heard from a couple of parents at that school who were unhappy that he was traveling internationally, saying they'd been discouraged to do this. And that if you come back, that you have to quarantine for seven days. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of layers to this story. Yeah, and not just traveling internationally, traveling to Mexico, where the CDC specifically, you know, gives it a, a, a high warning of, of not to go there. Um, it's, yeah, it's fascinating and fascinating reporting that you're able to, to uh, obtain those, those messages. Um, Shane, appreciate it. Shane Goldmacher, thanks so much for the reporting.